Hello, thank you for attending this presentation and I'm very glad to be speaking after Aneta because lots of the things I'm going to say are going to resonate with, with what she just says. said. Sorry. Uh, I'm a former journalist, I've been a journalist for 10 years and um, uh, for all that time I've been a uh, video games player too. And I always thought about video games as a very strong media with very specific ways to convey things, informations and things that people, players can actually learn from. So um, one day I decided to create a company uh, that is called the Pixel Hunt just to do that, to do what I call reality inspired games, games that uh, find their their essence in reality. And uh, that's not exactly new, but I have to, to be a little bit more specific. Uh, lots of people in video games world tend to think that reality is the worst game ever, that reality is boring, and uh, that uh, they would play video games for escapism, for uh, uh, a desire to not think about real life and what happens uh, on an everyday basis, but to like play as a knight or a soccer player or anything. I obviously disagree with that, but I think it's important to understand where it comes from. Uh, it comes from the fact that uh, for a very long time, uh, the video games industry has had a focus on being entertaining. So yes, video games were interested in what they would call realism, so very realistic graphics in football games or very realistic war games in which every bullet weight would be uh, would be um, simulated to be as realistic as possible. Lots of polygons, uh, very eye-hand visuals, but reality was not very interesting to them. Why? Because uh, I think they might look at reality uh, in kind of the wrong way and see nothing inspiring about reality. But if you look at other media, uh, you have thousands and hundreds of thousands of proofs that it's not right. For instance, The Wire is a very famous TV show, and it's a fiction, definitely, but it's also by uh, Mr. Simmons, who used to be a journalist. So part of the reason why The Wire is so enjoyable as a TV show is because it's, uh, it's based strongly on the reality of nowadays Baltimore, as a city was lots of problems, uh, drugs and everything. Uh, that's kind of the same thing happened in comic books too. In the 50s and in the 60s, most people would consider comic books to be uh, childish entertainment and not, not very worthy of telling serious stories. Then, Art Spiegelman, this, uh, who was a guy who made comics, uh, decided he wanted to tell the story of his family in Nazi Germany concentration camps and as he was a comic book maker, he decided to make a comic out of it. That was in the late 70s and probably some people thought he was completely crazy. But he did it nonetheless and that gave us Mouse, which is one of the most powerful comics of all time. So we are not art figure man, obviously I'm not as talented as he is, but we try to do something similar to that. We try to make video games that get inspiration from reality, uh, such as uh, documentary filmmaking is also, like with Super Size Me, uh, this picture here. And we try to tell important and interesting stories and have people think about them for a long time after the play. So, what's a reality-inspired game? This is a definition I uh, coined, so you, you're completely right if you want to challenge it, but I will ju just try to expose my point of view here. First, it's a game that refers more or less directly to reality. It's not frightened to say, yes, I am a video game, but yes, also, I talk about real-life events, and I have things to say about them and convey about them. Uh, how, how does a game do that? Because it's not, uh, you, do, you do not do that the same way in games that you would do it in a novel or in a movie. So, games work the way that they have to describe things through models uh, or systems of rules. You, there are things that you can do and things that you cannot do, and what you do as a player has consequences on the game system. So, a reality-inspired game would do that, like any other game, but it would do that to try to describe reality through the system and allow players to interact with the system and have actions and see what the consequences to these actions are. 
And that's the um, third point. It's very important that obviously games are designed to be played. If you fall asleep uh, looking at a movie uh, and wake up one, one hour and a half later, the movie will be ending when you wake up and probably you would have drooled a little bit on your couch or something. But if you fall asleep before uh, Super Mario, uh, then Mario will be at the exact same place because the game is a discussion between the player and the game system. If you do not interact with the game, the game does not play itself. So the players will be able to interact with this model and thus uh, they will adopt unusual points of view. Like they will, games would allow you to be in a situation that you are not in in your everyday life and that's important. Because you will experience situation and you, you might learn from them, but you will not have to face real life consequences. And that's very important. I've, I've made a game that is called Burning My Love. It's about a, a certain migrant who tries to reach Europe. And some people talked about, talked about it saying, uh, that's a game that puts you in, in a migrant's shoes. And I strongly oppose this idea. No, you are not in a migrant's shoes and you are lucky not to be. It's not about that. It's about having a glimpse of the experience, but it's a game and you're preserved from the awful, harsh, real life consequences. And that's very important because I think that's what allows uh, games, reality inspired games, to be meaningful experiences because you can reflect on the consequences without being personally threatened in your security, for instance. So that, this is why I, I think and I hope uh, reality experience, the uh, reality inspired games enrich player as human beings and that's why that's what we try to do with our games uh, if we i don't know if we succeed or not that's something you'll have to tell me if you play the games i work on so the first point how can a game uh, reflect on reality well that there's a different way to look at it this this this, ref this reference can be more or less direct. This is a screenshot of a, of a fairly famous game that is called Papers, Please. And it's supposed to be taking place in Astotska, which is an imaginary country, but it's uh, referencing former uh, Soviet Union uh, countries. So it's an indirect reference. You, like, a lot of players will get the reference, but the game decides to avoid direct reference. It doesn't say, it's taking place in Poland, for instance, or in Czech Republic, or in any other real country. But the aesthetics and the, the general feeling of the game makes it clear, but not directly referenced. Uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum, uh, uh, 1979 Revolution is directly inspired uh, by the Ir Iranian Revolution. And if you play the game, you will see that the game makes direct references it quotes real people, it quotes real situations, and it doesn't shy away from being a direct reference to, to reality. And that's also an interesting take. I'm not taking sides here. I think I understand both sides, but it's important to, 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 to know that some games are direct references and others are less direct references. And also, reality is something that you experience on, in, on an intimate basis. So you have your own perception of reality, I have mine. But it's, some, it's also something collective, and some games try to tackle very intimate experiences. experiences. For instance, a game in Sibyl uh, by uh, Nina Freeman is an incredible testimony uh, about what it means to be a teenager and fall in love inside a massively multiplayer video game. And it's, it's super powerful, but it's also very intimate. And on the other side, you have this game that you might know because it's from a Polish studio, This War of Mine by 11-bit studio, which is a collective uh, reference to reality. It's, it's about uh, trying to survive in a war-torn country as you are a civilian. So you're not a fighter, you don't kill anybody with guns. Well, you might have, uh, the, have to kill people, but that's not the core gameplay. The core, the core gameplay is about surviving as a civilian, which is a collective experience and it's a direct reference to a lot of uh, uh, events uh, humans have, have gone through but for instance the siege of Sarajevo is one of the of the influences for this game so that's 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 up to you as a game designer to decide what will be your place uh, the place of your game in inside this this scope then the game has to describe reality through a believable model 
you maybe have heard uh, of this game uh, that was called GFK Reloaded, and it was like a um, killing GFK simulator. Well, <laughs> it's a little bit blunt said like that, and you might discuss the good taste of this game, but what was very interesting is that the simulation was as accurate and as true to reality as possible. I mentioned the, the fact that you can simulate the weight of a bullet, and that's what they did. So they put you in the third floor of the uh, library where Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to be, and they give you the same rifle he had, and you, have, you are supposed to try to kill JFK, and after each game, uh, they would dissect your performance and see if it matches the the Warren, the, the Warren Commission report. So the point of the game is to uh, investigate, is it or is it not possible that things have happened as the Warren Commission report say they have. So that's a game that uses a um, believable model to try to investigate reality, and I think that's interesting, even though it's been like received with mixed feelings by the audience. Uh, so reality inspired games, they also allow you to adapt point of views that are not your own. For instance, we made this game about crisis communication, Jeu d'influence, which, which translates to game of influence. So you are a spin doctor and you are trying to... No, it's about spin doctoring, but you are playing as someone who hires a spin doctor to try to uh, get out of a media crisis uh, situation. And what's funny about this game is that when, once, once it was out, we had feedback from both people who told us this is a very interesting game because it shows the world how people try to manipulate us and try to twist reality and make us believe things that did not actually happen. And we also had feedback from uh, communication uh, professionals that uh, would say, oh, it's a very interesting game because it's a very good media training tool. So lots of people perceive it differently and I think that's interesting because you can uh, have a your own view, even though the game puts you in one specific situation. The game does not tell you how to think, it just allows you to leave a situation and then you, you are able to draw your own conclusions. And this is also very important when game designers try to, try to put you in situations that could potentially be hazardous to your health. For instance, this work by a very famous game designer named Robert Young. Um, he's a homosexual and he's like Lots of his work has been uh, about homosexuality and the acceptance of homosexuality by society at large. And for instance, in, in this game, which is called the Tea Room, is uh, put you in the, in, the, in the shoes of... of uh, I said I would not use that expression, sorry. <laughs> he, he makes you experience this situation when you are an, an homosexual in 1962 in Mansfield, Ohio. So a very rural part of America, where homosexuality was strongly uh, frowned upon by society in general. And you have to meet with other people in, 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 the, in the bathroom and you have to try to have a romantic relationship with them. But some of them are policemen in disguise and you don't know that. So you are trying to seduce men but you don't know if you are going to uh, have a good time or have a lot of problem. And when you get lots of problem you get this gut feeling that it's something that could be very, very bad for you if you were actually experiencing this experience in 1962 in in Mansfield, Ohio. So it's very interesting. Also, uh, the funny part is that um, it's about um, like performing oral sex, but as you might know, video games have absolutely no problem with guns, but they have a lot of problem with penises. So what he did is that when you perform oral sex on the, on the man, uh, they have guns instead of penises. And if you, if, you, if you are good at what you're doing, well, I'll let you imagine what happens with the gun they have. But it's really interesting. Okay, to, be, to quickly wrap it up, um, I think that reality-inspired games are interesting and important because they allow you to, to, to have a deeper understanding and of what being human is. And for instance, there's two examples. The first is uh, a game called The Normal Lost Form. Um, so I won't tell you what it's about because it's part of the experience to uncover what the theme of the game is. Uh, and on the right is Burning Alive, it's the game we worked on. Uh, so uh, this is Noor, this is the main character, and she's uh, having a conversation with her husband as she tries to flee from Syria and reach Europe. It's based on lots of real-life testimonies, and uh, it's also the, the real-life story of someone who helped us write the game as realistically as possible. And we used smartphone inf interfaces because 
nowadays every day as a, everybody has a very intimate relationship to their smartphone and everybody knows how to text so everybody here even if you never played a video game in your life can play those two video games and i think that's important because if we want to say things about the world we live in through video games we also have to take into consideration that video games for lots of people are scary stuff that you you can't uh, uh, get the hang on, uh, well those games are not, we really try to be as, as, as careful uh, to design games for everyone as possible. For instance, my mom finished my game, and that's what the, one of the things I'm the most proud of. And I hope and think she learned things about the situation described in the game through playing the game. So, that's it, thank you.